We've now investigated the fundamental counting principle, various types of permutations and combinations. The questions are going to be scrambled from this point forward, where you're going to have to read the problem and then decide which is the appropriate counting method to use. Problems involving the fundamental counting principle use the word and. So imagine your different stages, such as the buffet, where we have a table of fruit, a table of pastries, a table of beverages, this is how many choices we have at the first stage, this is how many choices we have at the second stage, and this is how many choices we have at the third stage, etc. So if you think about the problems we did, such as the buffet, choosing menu items, building an outfit, combination locks, social insurance numbers, all of those things where we're trying to figure out how many possibilities are there at this stage, and this stage, and this stage, that's when we can use the fundamental counting principle. If you have something that's being ordered, but we're not necessarily using all items, we can also use the fundamental counting principle where we have this many choices here and then this many choices here and this many choices in that position. If the order matters we have a permutation so anytime you see the word arrange we know the order matters it's going to be a permutation. If we are arranging all objects we can just use n factorial so we're going to go down to the last object in the last position. If we are arranging a limited number we can use the NPR formula so how many objects are available we're putting them into how many positions. And if we were to write this in factorial notation, we know it represents this. Remember, with permutations, if we are arranging duplicate items or identical items, we have to remember to divide out the duplicates so that we have the number of distinct arrangements left. And finally, if the order does not matter and we are choosing groups of objects, then we can use combinations, NCR. How many objects do we have available? We're putting them into groups of how many. And we know combination notation can be represented with this formula. So we are arranging all objects, we are dividing out those we're not using, and because the order doesn't matter, we're then going to unarrange or divide out the arrangements of the objects that we are using. In our first example, we are asked to determine the number of different arrangements. Okay, so right there, that's your keyword. So grab a highlighter or underline that. That tells us we need a permutation using all the letters a, B, C, C, D, E, E. So a question like this, I can see that I'm going to begin by arranging seven letters and there are duplicates. So when I set this up, I'm going to arrange all seven. I'm going to divide out the duplicates. Remember, you have to bracket this when you put it into your calculator. And we're going to end up with 1,260 different arrangements. So because it's an arrangement, we're going to ask ourselves, are there any conditions? We're using all of the letters. There's no conditions, but we have to be aware there are duplicates and then we need to divide those up. In the second question, we're asked to determine the number of different license plates that can be produced if four letters are followed by two digits and the letters O and I cannot be used. I would begin by drawing out my spaces and I know that I need a letter and a letter and a letter and a letter and a digit and a digit. So I'm going to just make a note underneath of what each of those lines represents and then it tells me that I cannot use the letters O and I. So that means the 26 letters in the alphabet, we're only able Able to use 24 of them. We can't use the O, we can't use the I. And it doesn't say that repeats aren't allowed, so that means I'm going to also have 24 possibilities that can go in that space, and 24 there, and 24 there. I have 10 digits that could potentially be used, 0 through 9, and 10 digits could potentially go in there. So this is a scenario where we are going to use the fundamental counting principle, because this letter, whatever goes here, we can repeat it and potentially have that same letter in that position. So when we multiply all of those, we have 33,177,600 different license plates that can be created given that condition. Now in our next question here, we have 25 students who are going to help switch classrooms. Five students will be moving desks, six will be moving chairs, two will be moving equipment, and the rest will be carrying books. Determine the number of ways the students can be chosen to perform these tasks. Okay, chosen. We are choosing groups of students to do jobs. The order in which they're chosen doesn't matter. We just have to get all of the furniture from one classroom to the next classroom. So we're going to begin, because it's combinations, by setting up what we have here. So we're going to start with our five students will have to move desks and six moving chairs and two moving equipment and the rest. You have to figure out how many students does the rest entail. 
If we have 25 students in the class, 5 plus 6 is 11, plus 2 is 13. 12 more students are going to get us to 25 students. That means 12 students are carrying the books. Now, when we go to set this up, we have 25 students to begin with. We are choosing 5 to move the desks. And once those five leave, they go into the hallway, they're already moving, there are 20 students left. Six of them are going to be moving the chairs. Those six go into the hallway, they're already gone, they're moving classes. 20 minus 6 is 14. That means there are 14 students left to choose from. We are choosing two to move equipment. They go off and move the equipment. There are 12 students left. All 12 of them are carrying the books out. So when we go to put this in the calculator, we are multiplying all four of those, and we are going to end up with this many ways that the students can be chosen to perform these tasks. And in our final example, we are asked to determine the number of ways to arrange. So as soon as we see that word arrange, grab your highlighter. That's a key word that tells us we have a permutation. And we are arranging 10 students at a time from a class of 30. So we can go right into our permutation notation. There's no conditions given to us there. So just we have 30 students. We're picking 10 to put into those positions. And this is the number of arrangements we're going to end up with. And I would suggest that you try entering this in your calculator. Your calculator will give you that number in scientific notation and then when you take it out of scientific notation this is the number of different arrangements that we could have. So when you go to do problems and they're all scrambled together you really need to be thinking is this combinations is this permutations does the order matter or not is it the fundamental counting principle are we allowed to repeat the number of objects we're using at each spot and the more that you practice these the different types of scenarios you see start to become more familiar and you'll get more efficient at being able to quickly identify this type of question is this problem this type of question is this problem and i promise you with practice this does become much easier